May was filled with music projects from all over the African continent coming out. It was awesome. We're definitely spoiled for choice and I'm going to share a list of the four best projects I came across over the last month from the African music scene. Which of your favorite EPs and albums will make this month's list of best African albums? Let's find out. Buckle up. This is the no BS version. First up, we're going to start with Savara No Overthinking. Now, Savara, Savara, Savara has really come through with a project Kenya and Africa will be super proud of. I felt that as he started pursuing his solo career post Saudi Soul, so to speak, since they're taking a break or whatever that is, he has been searching for his own sound. And I think on No Overthinking, he's found it. No Overthinking is a welcome escape which takes you on this journey. It's crafted to take you on the right ups and when it slows down, it then picks you up in such a smooth transition. The collabs are good here and I absolutely loved the song with Harmonize, a good one for East Africa in general. The song Roxana reminded me of Rema in the bass leads, the tempo and delivery. Now think of the Rema song like Soundgasm, somewhere there. I think if you listen to those two songs side by side, you will pick up on some similarities. In many ways, this project offers a bit of everything. I mean, there's even the new three-step Afro house genre uh, showing a showing how wide of a musical palette Savara has. And on that note, I actually have a video titled "What Is Three-Step Afro House," and it is on my YouTube channel. So check it out. Back to Savara. Perhaps there's a reason why, you know, he really titled it No Overthinking, because when you think of there being three-step Afro House on this project, the title No Overthinking makes sense. It doesn't sound like he was trying to be very calculated and not in a reckless sense either. He simply let the music flow while having fun. And what I love about it is you can hear it in the music. Well done, Savara. I rate Nova Thinking by Savara a 7.7 .7 out of 10. The next project on the list, Tiwa Savage, Water and Gary, original motion picture soundtrack. The way this project begins, and I'm talking the first two songs here, is so R&B that it's like Tiwa Savage going back to the music she really wanted to make before popping in Afro beats. She has defaulted to this style before, but she's definitely going to give us more of this with each project release. Having said that, the versatility on Water and Gary, or original motion picture, um, is on full display. It doesn't come as a surprise to me because this is a soundtrack for a motion picture after all. The movie Water and Gary, which I watched by the way. It's watchable from start to finish, which is great. Not necessarily a genre of film I'm into particularly, but it is very artistic with patient storytelling. I'm not going to get into a review of this movie or whatever, but go ahead and give it a go and see Tiwa, Savage, Tiwa Savage's acting ability. The Water and Gary soundtrack is a very good album technically, in many ways following what I felt about the movie itself. The soundtrack in that regard exceeds all expectations actually. Its technical execution is on a level where it definitely could be in for some awards in the future. Listen to the title track featuring The Caveman and you'll get what I mean. The musicality is out of this world. On Tiwa's part herself, she had to be in so many different pockets for uh, the song performances. What she managed to achieve will be hard to replicate by anyone, not only on the continent. It does go to show that she is a complete artist and a veteran in this game. This is a well-worked project that touches on many different subject matters and covers a wide array of moods. There's a little something for everyone, including some dope collabs with artists such as Olamide, Maestro Sugar, uh, Ricardo Banks, uh, Asha, the Nigerian songstress, Ira Star, Zakadi Cortez, Black Sheriff, Young John, Richard Bona, and The Caveman, of course. A very good cast. I rate Water and Gary by Tiwa Savage an 8.2 out of 10. Next up, we got Saw Matrix, Akani. Woo! 
as far as soulful private grammar piano goes soul matrix his name rings out and as i listened to his project akani i found that being reinforced more and more to be fair it's a mix of soul former piano and private grammar piano somewhere there if you don't know the difference between the two watch my video on my youtube channel titled uh, five types of ama piano you should know and it gives you the lowdown this is how good this album is there's no standout track all the tracks are equally beautiful and they really come from a genuine place of artistry what i mean at least is to say that depending on what you like there's every chance that akani is an album you can play from start to finish and then over and over and over without getting bored not all genres can do this and not all artists can do this either i had my own uh, favorite songs based on taste and being downright surprised then amused at the composition more than anything this didn't take anything away from every other track regardless you'll find singles that were released before such as the song amapupo with Snetemba Gonelo, uh, Murumba Pitch, Cineman Q, and then Umbuzo with Murumba Pitch again, and Sipo Magudulela, and then Pumelela. This is the quintessential soulful private squama piano album, and it is easy to rinse and repeat this one. Excellent features, great production. Here's my worry though. Fans might miss a few gems as a result of our short attention spans. So, I hope Soul Matrix can take time to push more songs individually for us to actually appreciate the phenomenal artistry behind them. I rate Akani by Soul Matrix a 7.5 out of 10. And finally, Waithaka sold duets. When Waidaka drops an album, you know he means business, and he has a catalog to prove it. This king and producer is no stranger to my reviews, with me having reviewed his 2020 project titled BLK2541. That's some interesting coding to that album title, but I digress. I listened to his latest offering sold duets while taking a long walk, experiencing a little bit of nature and fresh air and i just thought this might be a good album for this so i went for it and it was an intriguing listen so to speak what i didn't expect is how the music made me feel in tandem with me doing this physical activity of walking it was like taking an escape from the real world and appreciating the simplicity of everyday feelings such as love expressed like in a relationship sense this made me think about the songwriting here but what really stood out became the way different artists actually paired throughout sold duets as a project to tell unique stories of duality you know my perspective versus your perspective male female and it kind of keeps going in that in that direction when these stories are put together on this project you are now within a whole different element each artist that features on sold duets did an exceptional job in elevating their own talent as pretty talented people by the way uh, but that's more so alongside others without being drowned out or losing the essence of why we love them individually that plays out well for the authenticity of sold duets and gives it a nice listening longevity when you go from track one which is kind of like a spoken word type um sort of thing which is a great intro by the way and then you just move through the actual sort of music the stuff that you latch on towards the vibes for example track two the vibe you get from it is kind of like a Sade type of feeling and it's just so magnetic it draws you in one thing many people might not instantly appreciate about souls duets and particularly about this album is the logistical heavy lifting needed to get all these talented acts together on a project and to get them seamlessly sounding like they were all in one room when everything was being ticked put together the music the vocals the mixing the mastering everything 
it all sounds like it was just glued together in one setting. And that's extremely challenging to do. No wonder Soul Duets took a few years to put together, but after it was released, I think there was some really great feedback on social just about how it was sounding and how it was received by uh, general listeners and critics alike. Shout out to the team behind the technical aspects on Soul Duets. It was mixed and mastered by Gigs. Uh, recorded by Waitaka himself, uh, Tawala Beats, and Dilly. If you're into R&B soul of any kind, this is the type of album you should be listening to. It gives you an interesting perspective. From a Kenyan point of view, I think they nailed it. One of the best Kenyan albums I have heard in recent times, and that's that's saying quite something. I rate Sold Duets by Waitaka a 9 out of 10 comes highly recommended and that wraps it up for may's best african projects what projects made it onto your list of best releases of the month let me know in the comments below and let's have a healthy discussion around it otherwise that's it for me my name is mj omoto son of zimbabwe signing out peace day day Very dangerous.